Hello, welcome back. Nice to see you again. In this lesson, we're going to start talking seriously about time series forecasting. We're going to look at linear regression with lags. We're not going to use a time series forecasting package yet. We'll start that in the next lesson. We're going to load a time series data set here in the Explorer. Going over to the Explorer, I'm going to load an airline. This is where my WECA data sets are. I don't know where yours are. Uh, I'm going to load airline.arf. And uh, here it is. I'm going to just have a look at this data with the edit button. And you can see that there's a passenger numbers attribute and then a date attribute that goes from uh, the 1st of January 1949 through to the 1st of December 1960. So these are this is ancient airline passenger data. And uh, we're going to go to classify here and we're going to predict with linear regression in the functions category. This is important. We're going to predict passenger numbers. It's the first attribute, so we need to set it here from the default uh, because Weka by default predicts the last attribute. I'm going to just click start. And I get a, we're going to be looking at the root mean squared error here. It's 46.6 is what we get. We could look at the classifier errors. Now, this is a linear regression, so we're expecting a linear kind of line here. It's what linear regression predicts. I'm, on the y axis, I'm going to put the predicted passenger numbers. And on the x axis, I'm going to put the date. And there we have it. This is the predicted line. The size of these crosses incidentally indicates the size of the error at that point. But for our purposes here, it's a linear, it's a linear regression. Not really very interesting. One thing that's a little bit surprising is uh, the model is zero times date plus this constant, and that didn't look like that would be a horizontal line if it was really true. There's something a little bit funny about this, and what is funny about it is the date. If I go back and look here, the date attribute has got values ranging from these numbers here. So that's 662 billion minus 662 billion here. And that's because these dates are measured in milliseconds since January the 1st, 1970. So I'm going to convert them into months since the beginning of the data set. And I'm going to do that with a filter. And I'm, there's different ways of doing this, but I am going to use the add expression filter. And I'm going to make an expression that takes the second attribute, the date attribute. That's a2. And I'm going to divide that by, that's in milliseconds. I'm going to make it seconds. And I'm going to make it minutes. And I'm going to make it hours. And I'm going to make it days. And I'm going to make it years. 365 and a quarter days in a year. And uh, I'm going to add 21 to get from 1949 to 1970. And uh, I'm going to make this in months. It took me a little bit of a while to figure this out. I hope it's going to work. I'm going to call that attribute new date. And uh, let's see what happens here. I'm going to apply the filter. And now I've got new date, which goes from around about 0 to about 143. Now, there's a little issue here with leap years, right? I'm using this figure of 365.25 days in a year, which is um, pretty accurate on average. Uh, but I should really take into account exactly which years are leap years and so on. So there's a bit of inexactness going on here. But never mind, just a bit approximate. I'm going to delete the date attribute, remove the date attribute. I'm going to look at the model again. I'm going to remember every time, this is a bit of a nuisance, every time I've got to remember to predict passenger numbers. And uh, if I run that, then uh, we're getting uh, this model 2.66 times the new date plus 90. It's the same model as before, but we've kind of scaled new date. So now this coefficient, which used to be zero, rounded down to zero, is something more sensible. Okay, so far so good. And so far, not very interesting. Uh, here is the regression line, and you can see the data. The data is kind of cyclic when you look at it passenger numbers, it depends on the month, you know, and yet the regression line is just a straight linear prediction. Not so interesting. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. 
we're going to copy the passenger numbers attribute. We're going to add a delayed version of passenger numbers. I'm going to use the copy filter to create a new attribute. I'm going to copy the first attribute and apply that. And here we got copy of passenger numbers. I'm going to take this attribute and uh, uh, subtract 12. I'm going to kind of lag it. I'm going to delay it by 12 months. So it's going to take, contain the sort of last year's value for that month. I'm going to do that with a time series translate. And I'm going to configure that by, I'm going to translate the third attribute. I'm going to translate it by 12 months, subtract 12 months from that. And uh, I think that's okay. And then I need to actually, it doesn't, this particular filter doesn't work on the class. So I'm going to set the class back to passenger numbers. And then I'm going to run it and see what happens here. I go to edit. Now I can see this is my new attribute. And you can see that that 112 is this 112 here. In fact, this is a delayed version of this uh, attribute. This gives for this month, month number 13, this gives the figure for the year before. And these are unknown values. Terrific. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm then uh, going to go back and predict this with linear regression. I need to remember to predict passenger numbers. So uh, there we go. And now I get a different model and a better root mean squared error, 31, 31.7. This is a kind of a model that uses uh, the, the date and then a little bit of the 12 months before copy. Now, actually, this is not a very good model. It's a little bit crazy. And the reason it's a little bit crazy is because of those missing values. We've got missing values at the beginning of the uh, data set. And we're going to get uh, much better results if we delete those instances with missing values. I'm going to do that with a filter. And I do that with an instance filter called remove range. And I'm going to remove instances from 1 to 12. And if I apply that, and now if I look at my data, I don't have missing values. This starts out with the 112 data, which is 12 months before. And this starts out on the 13th month of the original data, which is what I want. So I'm then going to go now and Classify that with linear regression. Don't forget to predict passenger numbers. There we go. And now I get a much smaller root mean square error of 16. And I'm getting quite a sensible model. This says passenger numbers increase a little bit. Take the passenger numbers of the year before, add 7%, and then just a little offset here. I could try and visualize this model. Uh, I'll just show you. If I do it this way, it's not really very informative because this is uh, predicted passenger numbers on the y-axis against date on the x-axis. And you can see that the kind of any pattern here, there is actually a cyclic pattern, but it's completely obscured by the size of these x's, uh, which are not very interesting uh, for our purposes at the moment. In order to get a better look at that, I'm going to use the add classification filter. I'm going to uh, add the classification. It's a supervised attribute filter. Add classification. I'm going to add the classification created by linear regression. I put the classification. And I need here to uh, say what we're going to be predicting, which is passenger numbers. I'm going to apply this filter, and now I get a new attribute classification, which I can then visualize. So I'm going to look at uh, classification against new date. And this shows you this kind of cyclic kind of prediction that we're getting here. So adding this uh, delayed attribute gives us a cyclic prediction. Let's go back to the slide and have a look at this. We've got a, a graph here which shows the prediction with lag 12. There is no prediction for the first 12 instances. I kind of deleted those. Uh, so these are the predictions, this kind of uh, cyclic wave. And you can see that fits pretty well, the actual values of passenger numbers, which uh, are the black dots here.
it's a much better fit to this kind of cyclic prediction than the original rather boring red linear prediction. And these are the two equations of those lines. So adding this simple lagged variable allows us to break away from the linear paradigm, even though we're using linear regression, and get nonlinear predictions. I think that's pretty exciting, actually. So I've done a, I've done a lot of things rather quickly here. And uh, you're going to be redoing them yourself in the activity with uh, a different classifier. Uh, so I've got a list of uh, some of the pitfalls that uh, uh, I've kind of done. Uh, and you might want to refer back to this list. I won't go through them now when you do the activity. Um, so have a look at that. And just to summarize, we've learned that linear regression can be used for time series forecasting and that lagged variables yield much more complex models than straight line ones. In this case, we chose the appropriate lag by eyeballing the data and noticing that it kind of varied in an annual cycle. And we could include more than one lagged variable with different lags. And we could think about seasonal effects, you know, we could think about yearly, quarterly, daily, hourly data. And of course, doing all this manually is a pain, adding these variables. So the time series forecasting package uh, helps you do this in a much uh, easier, quicker, more convenient way. And that's what we're looking at in the next lesson. Meanwhile, go off and do the activity, and I'll see you soon in lesson 1.3. Bye for now.